when you find what you're looking for, it's pretty exciting. It's like hitting the jackpot. All new at 430, DNA detectives, genealogy websites are revealing more than ever about our heritage and our family's past. But all that highly personal data is also becoming a tool for law enforcement with concerns reaching far into the future. NBC 10 investigative reporter George Spencer shows us why. Hello. How was your day? Waiting <laughs> for her kids bus, Tina DeFinis has always put family first. Hi. In fact, she's become something of a detective right. searching for her relatives' histories, especially this great-grandmother orphaned as a young girl. That started it. I got bit by the bug pretty fast. Like many of us, she's turned to genealogy websites to fill the gaps. She submitted a saliva sample and used online tools to connect the dots. Pretty exciting. Every new discovery is like, oh, look at this. But DeFinis may not be the only detective interested in the connections such tools reveal. Last month, we learned investigators may have finally identified California's Golden State Killer thanks to a genetic match to a relative who'd uploaded DNA data to the open source genealogy website GEDmatch. The suspect has not entered a plea in the case. And just last week, Washington state authorities believed they solved a 30-year-old double murder case in a similar way. That suspect has pleaded not guilty. We're going to start to see more of this, I think. J.J. Claver is a retired FBI supervisor who says online services are vastly increasing the amount of DNA data in existence outside the law enforcement database. When people upload that info to open source matching sites, the web of familial connections could offer detectives leads for any crime with DNA evidence. They're trying to narrow it down, so think of it like a jigsaw puzzle, you know, and the pieces are falling into place. Both 23andMe and Ancestry.com say they never voluntarily work with law enforcement, and they recommend against third-party matching sites. But both companies acknowledge even with those protections, your DNA data might still be accessible if it's subpoenaed or a judge orders it. They're not going to just provide information to law enforcement. They're going to need a subpoena or a court order. So there is some legal process. There are some checks and balances. It is a free for all right now. Pam Dixon of the World Privacy Forum says many people incorrectly assume their DNA data is somehow protected under privacy laws, even if they've placed it publicly online. Dixon tells us it opens a Pandora's box, potentially incriminating children or relatives generations into the future, and even offering insurance companies or employers permanent insight into private, heritable medical conditions. It impacts you, all your relatives, and all your kids, and their kids, and their kids. DeFinis, for one, says she doesn't have privacy concerns and likes that police have one more tool to catch a criminal. If you committed a crime, you know, you're guilty of a crime, and one day it's going to catch up to you. Now, Dixon encourages family researchers to check the privacy policies of the websites they're using. Both of the biggest DNA websites say they will only provide basic subscriber information with a subpoena and additional information only with a court order. Jim and Jacqueline. So we're hearing about these cases elsewhere where they're using law enforcement, using these DNA right, tools right. to crack cases. But right. are, is local law enforcement doing So that? that's the big question we were wondering about. We checked with a couple of the biggest forces in our area, Philly and Camden. Both of them told us they have not used these websites just yet to solve cases, but obviously that's what we'll be watching for going forward. All right. It's uploading that second step yes. is the issue. That's the big issue that people should watch for. Yeah. George, thank you for that.